Is everybody called skulls calls, right? Well, I'm trying to break down last notes of our dying world. Nobody else out there seems to be interested in doing so. Maybe it's just us. Maybe it's, maybe you know what? Maybe the whole world isn't that whole network of, of good people. Because that's what they said they need. They wanted to eliminate. I thought it would mean everybody. See how casually they fucking, like, take in my call when I said I could hear some in Morse code for help in the furnace? With me, I was saying that to one stop for me, for me, sir. Let go. Let go. Please, please. Pardon? Oh my God, stop being so casual. Because you don't see what's really going on. Who am I speaking to? It's Candy. Candy? Okay. Uh, I believe I was speaking with you earlier. No, Candy? Yeah, did That's you did you check out, did you check out the furnace? Do you do you do you know Morse code? You know Morse code, Morse code, right? You're military too. Yeah, I heard it. SOS, SOS, banging inside the furnace. I don't know what you want me to do. What kind of information you want to get from me anymore? Do you want me to climb the fur the furnace myself? I don't have a ladder. I don't have any tools. Does it matter what my last name is? There's someone in the fucking furnace, Morse coding for help. Bet you they're going to come and they're going to say, yo, yo, you forgot to go to your court date, yo, yo, you have a warrant for your arrest. There goes all my things, all my things gone away in the hands of the last bitch police. But they won't return to me, knowing that I told them, I told them what I was doing. Just to say. Just go out there.
no, 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 no. Doesn't matter, I don't trust you. Check on the furnaces, please. What package? Oh, it's me too. That must be a pain. That's a lot of pain, no? That's. I'm gonna go to the hospital and see. My pain is just escalating. It's an exponential, an exponential race, um, and exponentially, what? Uh, that's, that's, um, exponentially, or, uh, accelerating my pain. I never thought I'd ask me, yeah, I'm just been saying I'm this, I'm that, do this, do that. Raise your care card. I spell your name. So tell us exactly what happened. So I got to pay $400 for a trip to the emergency to sit there and wait for at least eight hours. In the waiting room, setting up by myself, with no money in my pocket. If I even get a chance to get seen, it'll be middle of the night already. I can't take the bus home because I don't know that buses anymore. And I've been hurting my brain for so long. I take a cab and it's just another twenty dollars dollars I can't afford. And then I come back to where I'm staying at that day and it's the same thing anyway. Even at the hospitals it's the same thing. The big nice doctor who goes to work at the Tabor um uh, table emergency. I gave him a note to said who to who to contact for the free that free medication that works for cancer and it also works for AIDS and HIV and it's just a vitamin. There's no there's no um there's no um put the, taking off the hair. That treatment, uh, it's very good for our body, uh, these vitamins, and natural. And they said, yes, it works. And I said, only a lot, I only want, I don't even want no recognition for it, or any monies. I just want that if, if somebody in the world be, it be made available to everyone in the world who needs it, for free. So you're gonna tell me that this is, this is a business to me, a money-making business? 
No, this is our lives. And they shot the doctor after he read it and he tried to make a phone call. They shot the guy and ran it. I don't know where, but as soon as I stepped outside the um, uh, emergency room, this was like a few months ago, I heard a gunshot. The, the news guy doctor was, was saying, Stop hurting your son! And the, What's that word? And I go back in there and everybody, everybody's just pretending that nothing happened. And I never seen that good big, that good big, um, um, a good big soldier, uh, doctor anymore. Why don't you think that they know now, but now the adversary already knows who's, who's a soldier, who's an agent, who's a cop, who's a this, who has that, who's that, that, but you're gonna, you're gonna say, shh. I'm not foiling your rescues. I don't even think anymore just because of that. And these pieces of shit that you include in the fucking, in the fucking facilitating the 21 year mess rescue. Who has, has his bachelor's degree and some studies? Who has he taken your masters? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm like, oh, that, that is good. That's good. That's good. Yeah, come time when they fucking got there, they put a gun to their heads and they fucking folded. I know how many fucking, like, United States, Canadian Armed Forces and USA soldiers were on that? Three fucking green black hawks. I know because I got the order. I didn't know yet what it was, when it was come or well, how. Because they can't tell me right away. It will just get foiled again. And these pieces of shit, fake pretending to be fucking staff there, are all fucking thinking so fucking heavily and fucking so loud about the black herd mission, the blackbird, blackbirds, oh, they're going to go on the roof. And like, they think that their brains are, like I said, if you think that it's because it's only my voice being heard out there in the broadcast, fucking smarten up. All of our fucking thoughts are being fucking monitored, even before we knew about this game. Because what happened? One innocent ch kid over there who was playing along with the fucking what's going on anyway because their parents fucked, their over, fucked them over. Making fucking loud noises, pretending that the, my son is not in and out of that place being beaten up, trying to find me. And somebody put a gun to the boy's head. Everybody fucking folded. Yeah, okay, because my son has only been tortured, been being tortured for 21 fucking years since he was eight years old, and he never misbehaved. He, he never misbehaved, ever. He's a good person, but he's, but, oh. So why did you fucking sign up for a 21-year-old fucking mission for rescue if you're just going to fold at the first gun you see? How many of innocents have been suffering much longer than that kid? Plus that kid gets the shot to the head, it's 100% he saved. He doesn't have to fucking like die or get, he doesn't have to fucking like go through the shit world already that we've been living, with, 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 that what we've been leaving them. You know, all day, all night, for fucking three fucking days, people were coming into that place, that YWCA Harbor House. Children are being torn up. Children are being thrown off the roof, into the subroof. My son's been being thrown off the roof. Oh, subroof. Oh, soldier this, oh, soldier that, general this, general that, oh, constable this, constable that. And I'm like, oh, my God. 
I couldn't see him, but I could feel it. So I wake up. I'm in so much pain. And I ask the staff, the fake staff, like, can't you, what's going on? I can even hear, like, someone, like, moaning in pain up on the rooftop, on the sub-rooftop. They're like, oh, we don't see anything. Let us know sometime, I, I, when when you do again. I'm like, you don't hear, hear it? Because it doesn't, it hasn't stopped. You know who those were? The soldiers for the UN, California, not California, America and Canada. We were fine. They were finally able to put together a rescue mission. Although he didn't have, they didn't have all the information they have yet necessary. That's enough for them to come. And it was like for me. It was for the victims. Why? Because I, we can drop them off somewhere safer and keep coming back for others. Why a Black Hawk of all fucking like vehicles? Because they saw that in my memory that I know how to, how to drive one, fly one. I saw that too. And they said, and they, the Canadian Armed Forces called the YWCA Harbor House here in fucking Lethbridge and said to them, strictly, don't let her leave. Watch over her if she goes out so that she doesn't leave. We need her. They kicked me out for no reason all of a sudden. Because this girl who I know stands outside of the that fucking... YWCA fucking women shelter here in Lethbridge standing outside there I walk by and she's got some sort of fucking synchronizer and I know that I can hear my voice even before I, I come out and they were pretending to be me talking misdirecting misdirecting traffic and good people that are coming around to help saying oh she, she's over there oh she's over there she's over there sending them to, the, to their demise and then I go upstairs, and our other roommate, she's nice. She goes, you know that that white girl there, or whatever she is. She's been going through your things. I go, what the fuck, right? So I go tell them. I tell the staff. I say, you know, she can't be like touching my things like that, you know. And they say, oh yeah, we'll talk about her then. We'll talk. We'll talk to her about it then. We'll talk to me, to her about it. And I go in my room and I tie to tidy up tidy up my my bed, and this this girl woman whatever goes to me. Are you okay? Is there something I can help you with? How can I help you? I'm like, first of all, you're not nice. You've always been mean. Second. Stop pretending to me to be me out there. And third, stop playing this game. And fourth, get your fucking I didn't say I didn't say fucking. Stop stop touching my things. Number five, leave me alone. And I'm the one who gets kicked out. Right away. Because they said she felt threatened. Tabor Safe Haven, where they fucking play games with people too. They torment, they torment children too. Children, they're my sons especially. Every time I would live there before, I would notice, like, you know, like a slice of pizza or whatever, um, snacks. Usually, like, what I would, what I would, you know, bring my, make a little bit of snacks for my son. Then they take it from him. They send him upstairs. And I hear him screaming there over and over again. But as soon as I get up there, sometimes I see piss stains on the floor. Shit stains. And they know he's my son. But they're playing games with them. And every person who came there to try to rescue us, 
got fucking like thrown off the side of the building over and over and over again. And you know, when I started figuring shit out about this fucking piece of shit safe haven, that's why they always kick good people out. Unless you're a quiet slave, then they won't kick you out. And then my, my schoolwork mentioned the term um, terrorist safe havens. They're trying to say something to me. Because there was a fucking Afghanistan girl there. And she would be up screaming all night on her phone. She's got, she's talking to us and I see her phone. She's video chatting a guy there. And the guy is listening to us, to our conversations. And I know that she was up to no good. And I tried to warn her. I tried to warn her, like not even being mean. I said, dude, you have to stop playing this game. I fucking just heard that they are going to blow up to blow up your your Afghanistan because you're their person in here and that's what you're doing. You still didn't na- come in the name of peace, eh? You still didn't come in the name of alliance. You were still going to betray us. She didn't stop. She didn't stop. She was trying to frame me too. Well, she's like, well, I'm not the only one with an iPhone here. Yeah, my iPhone's six. Yours is 10. And this girl finally, I'm in so much like pain. So, he wakes, she wakes, she's up fucking in the middle of the night, screaming and shouting on her cell phone in her language. And there's no problem with that, but you know what? When she wants something done, she can speak speak perfect, perfect, perfectly just like us. I asked her, are you, are you friendly, right? Where are you from? Afghanistan. But what do you do here? Do you studies? Studies or work? Uh, she goes, nothing, nothing. I'm like, hmm. Do you want to go back to school? I, I, I'm, we're looking for like new people who want to work for like the government. We lost a lot of, you know, service workers during the COVID. She's like, I don't, I don't understand. I don't understand. She goes, but when she's up all night and she goes to sleep all day and she will yell at us in like straight up English. Can you please turn the light off? I'm like, I wanted to say, miss, it's 12 noon. We can't, we have to like go through our stuff and do our studies and whatnot. Sharing the room, the same room with you, with other three people. And you want to sleep all day. And you know what? Because I said those things, they told me that I can never go back there. Even though it's two blocks away from my cold, no electricity, no bathroom, no running water, no light, storage shed. One time I woke up and somebody had closed the latch on me and I couldn't open it. Thank God that for some friends there. Good, it's good thing if my, my phone wasn't charged. I'd be screaming there day and night. Nobody would find me because it's an industrial area. Yet, they're two blocks away. So what exactly doesn't that, right? That the CIA terminology for it was fucking safe havens, terrorist safe havens. Isn't that coincidence? And I could hear her in her mind. In her mind, she thinks that I can't because she's stupid. 
She's saying, oh, I'm an intel from, I'm an intel from my country, yada, yada, yada. You know, like, well, you know what? You're stealing information from us. You're not here to help us.